your family, your health, our passion. This is Family Practice with Dr. Jeffrey Fox, sponsored by Family Practice Associates of Lexington, PSC. Visit us at fpalex.com and like us on Facebook. Welcome back. My next guest is Dr. Matthew Janko, who is a cardiothoracic and vascular surgeon with Baptist Health Lexington. Welcome. Now, Thank you for having me, Dr. Fox. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, I mentioned uh, at the beginning of the show, do your legs cramp when you walk where you may have a circulation problem? Is that a sign or symptom of what we call, I guess, PAD, or peripheral artery disease? Yes, it can be, Dr. Fox. So thanks for asking that important question. Hardening of the arteries or peripheral arterial disease affects millions of Americans and folks around the world, and many of them don't even know it. Folks may feel a tiredness or fatigue in their legs when they're walking, even at short distances. And the more severe form of peripheral arterial disease or hardening of the arteries is folks that have wounds on their feet or their legs that don't heal. Now, are, are there certain risk factors or certain type of people that may have uh, artery disease and are there things you can do to prevent it? Yes, absolutely. So, good question. Smoking is by far the most important risk factor that's an easy way to um, target uh, something that folks can do to try to reduce their risk of having both heart disease, lung disease, and peripheral arterial disease. So anything that folks can do to cut down on their smoking or ideally quit smoking is really important. Other risk factors for peripheral artery disease or hardening of the arteries are similar to heart disease. High blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes. It's really important that folks get those under control as best they can. Now, you're a surgeon, so we're going to start with the surgical aspect of it first. If you have a disease, what, what, do you do, what surgically do you do to fix that? Well, the first thing we like to do is try non-invasive medical therapies first when it's appropriate and safe for patients. Medications, walking therapy for folks that have pain in the legs. But if that's not going to be enough, then we like to proceed in a safe, stepwise, logical fashion up the intervention scale. And the first thing we do for folks that have pain in their legs, for example, or other artery disease in the belly or in the neck, for example, is to take pictures in the operating room with dye using wires, catheters, and, and x-rays. And through a small incision, we can also do interventions similar to stents that are placed in the heart, we can place stents or improve the blood flow through small incisions about you know, the, uh, the head of a pencil um, to, to improve blood flow. And if a patient doesn't get a good result with just that small incision, our backup plan is to do a more invasive surgery where we might have to make a little bit of a larger incision, like the length of your finger, for example, to open up that artery clean out the blockage and patch it, kind of like you might patch the elbow of your jacket. Well, you mentioned stent, and there's heart stent, but you can put a stent in any artery, and one of the things you can do is the carotid artery, the artery in the neck, which is, puts people at risk for stroke. That's right. So when you go to see your primary care doctor, make sure you ask them, am I at risk for having a stroke? And the doctor that sees you should take a listen to your neck to listen for what we call a bruit or a sound of blockage in the neck. We can do a painless ultrasound or a CAT scan to look for blockage in the neck and we can usually open up that blockage with a stent through an incision that's about that big either in the hip area or at the base of the neck. And then the same arteries to the leg if you don't open those arteries you're at risk for limb loss. That's correct. Some folks that have advanced disease in the legs are at risk for having limb loss, meaning an amputation. We really hate that. So we like to do whatever we can to avoid that, whether it's lifestyle modification, quitting smoking if possible, managing diabetes and blood pressure and cholesterol, and doing minimally invasive interventions usually that can really save people from having an amputation, which is really great. One quick question before we get out. Are there medis any medicines like aspirin or other medicines that may help? Absolutely. Make sure you talk to your primary care doctor and to your vascular surgery or cardiac surgery specialist about taking the right medications to lower your blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, and help you walk longer. Usually those medications are a good way to start. We appreciate all the information. Thanks for coming in and thanks for what you do. Thanks for having me. 
And if you have problems, see your care, primary care doctor and avoid having to have a stent.